Windows wide, the curtains fly to catch the evening breeze. Without you here to keep me warm, believe I'd rather freeze. Believe I'd rather freeze. How long can we walk that line between the sea and sand? How long can we bide our time for dreams we never land? We're picking out toys. Bandanas, collars for a new puppy. Lando. The it keeps on growing so fast here. Time's coming on. And you cry to see a shadow babe. We're back in Redmond, uh, Oregon. After two months um, living in the Jeep, and we're here to pick up the motorhome. We had left it here for some service. Um, just some basic stuff uh, that needed to be done. Bit of a upholstery and things like that, but um, nothing got done. I'm not sure what the holdup was, but anyway. Um, we're gonna get the Jeep hitched up to it and start heading back to Canada, but first we're gonna stop and say hi to some family. We'll get the repairs done when we get a chance, when we get back to Ontario. We got the RV back. It wouldn't start at first because it's been sitting there for two months, uh, just basically idle. But um, man, whew, now we have so much room. Um, we're packing up the tents in the Jeep and I think I'm gonna put the bikes on here. Don't know what to do with all this space, but uh, motorhome living, we used to think it was camping. Now it is definitely glamping after <laughs> hanging out in the uh, Jeep for two months. job now is we took everything all this stuff here came out of the trailer it now has to be repacked and repositioned to fit into the motorhome basically right there that door is under the back the the main bed in the back there's a lot of storage there and we try to pack all five uh, backpacks with all the hiking gear in there and then um, pretty much everything else we have a few extra things like we bought the signs and the flag for the show and we'll use it I'm sure at uh, Overland Expo East or any other show we go to so we just got to find a place for that and then it's just a matter of packing everything together as tightly and neatly as possible but as you can see it's just a lot of gear after two months um, we've accumulated some gear and we just have to reposition it all the mountain bike helmets and all that used to sit on the trailer they now have to sit inside the vehicle somewhere so just playing uh, a little bit of uh, Tetris, I guess, making everything fit.
get out and exercise after sitting in the car in the motorhome. Having a dog in the RV requires a stop in a few times so he can pee, but also get his exercise. So he's, uh, Daniel's a great playmate for him. He sure enjoys running. <laughs> so every time we fuel, and maybe once in between, we stop and let him get out and run. Hey guys, we're here with Cody from Axfam, or Axfamily, A-X-E-F-A-M is your uh, Instagram yep. handle? And um, he actually reached out to us, what, two years ago while we were traveling through, and we said, hey, we should get together. Um, but it didn't work out until just now. We we're actually on our way home. As you know, we've been going up the coast, and uh, we're now going to be heading back east. But we were in Washington area, and we made a trip up to say hi to, to Cody. And as you know, we have our little family member here hiding in the background, uh, Lando, the, the new pup. and. Uh, Cody does, of all things, uh, training. So training of puppies and dogs, and we know nothing about it, and we have a lot of training ahead, especially Daniel, so this is really nice uh, to, to drop in and get some tips, and Cody's been giving us some really good tips for training this little guy. So, um, yeah, why don't you tell us about you, what you're working on? Yeah, so um, to give a little uh, background to Axe family, we were living on a ranch and then uh, my wife and I and our dog, Chief, decided to go on our own epic road trip and uh, ended up doing some research to see who else was out there and I found these guys and they've been uh, just kind of a huge inspiration for us and uh, super encouraging. And so we, we traveled for 11 months all around the country and uh, it, was, it was pretty epic. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I have been passionate about training dogs. And so now as we're kind of uh, transitioning from traveling to finding a home base, um, I've really uh, dove into uh, training Labradors more. And my family has been breeding Labradors for over 36 years. And this last litter, um, I took four of the puppies from that litter and I'm taking them through this whole process of training them up and creating basically a video course so that people can follow along and go through all the steps of what they need to do to create a loving and trusting bond with their dog um, and so the dog and themselves can have the healthiest uh, relationship in life possible. So we got two pups sleeping over there, uh, we got some more dogs outside and I'm just super excited for this little guy that he's going to be with, with you and um, you know he's already bonded to you guys really well and there's uh, a lot to learn for a little pup. You know, to us, little things like just the different textures and floor and stuff can be small to us, but for a dog, it's a huge uh, new experience. And right. you guys are doing great so far, and I'm I'm excited to see how this pup grows up and see what he does. Dan, you're gonna get involved in that course, mm -hmm. and uh, are you gonna be the head trainer, or what's the plan? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like uh, Cody was saying, there's so much to learn, and we're excited to do his online course and uh, learn bit by bit. Bring this guy up in a loving way. He's gonna be the adventure dog. Yeah, so as the course is in its pre-launch stage right now, the best way for you guys to get in contact with uh, what I'm doing is there's a YouTube channel called Gung Ho Dog Training. And that there's three videos up there, but eventually I'm gonna just be posting more free content on the YouTube channel with tips and tricks and different training techniques. And that's really the best place to start. So we'll put a link below for Gung Ho Dog Training. So you guys, uh, if you have a pup or you're thinking of getting one and you wanna do some training, that's gonna be the place to go. Thanks a lot, Cody. Yeah, Appreciate all the tips. It's great to see you guys.
Canada. We crossed the border a bit of time ago, and one of the first things we said we were gonna do was go get some double doubles at Tim Hortons. It's been a while. Hey, we are now in Radium Springs, BC. We came all the way up from Washington this morning, did a long drive today. But we're here at the same spot where we did some winter camping, if you recall. Uh, we camped here on a very, very cold night, and uh, it's a lot warmer now. It's about 90 degrees, it's 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, just a whole different story. But still have those gorgeous mountains in the background, and the big river down there. The river's uh, a lot higher than it was in the winter, obviously, with all the snow melt happening. But uh, yeah, we're going to have a beautiful camp spot here. Let the dog run around and play, and uh, we'll make a fire and get some food going. So we're up here in Golden, BC. It's about an hour and 15 minutes of where we camped last night. And we're just taking a little rip on the mountain bikes. And there's a river here that is just crazy powerful flow coming out of the mountains and heading into town, but, uh, or it goes in around through Golden, but what a beautiful spot. But we're here, we came up to Golden because uh, Pete had got a dentist appointment in the winter and then he had a follow-up uh, a couple months later, so we're here for that. He had uh, one dental appointment this morning, and he has just uh, he gets it finished off tomorrow afternoon, or tomorrow morning actually, and then we're gonna be heading east over the mountain passes here into Alberta, and we'll see how far we can get. But in the meantime, we're going for a nice mountain bike ride here on the gorgeous trails of North Central BC. into Saskatchewan. We got up uh, fairly early this morning after camping in a, a very small, just outside of a very small town in Alberta. We drove a couple hours, we're now in Saskatchewan, and the plan is to drive another six hours today, and we will pretty much be right at the uh, other side of the province, just about to enter into Manitoba. Um, Saskatchewan is the Great Plains, or the Great Prairies of Canada, and um, even though there's some rolling hills now, it gets very flat, and that's where they grow all the the wheat. So, um, yeah, it's a big contrast from the mountains, but it's it's got its own kind of beauty. So we'll show you some scenery. There's lots of antelope and prairie dogs on the side of the road, that's for sure. sleep in the uh, 
um, Fieldstone, the park just inside of Saskatchewan. Uh, but now we just crossed into Manitoba and we're just going to be making a beeline across trying to get to Kenora, Ontario. That's the plan for today. Once we're in Ontario, we feel like we're almost there, even though we're not. It's still a good three days drive from there. So anyway, we'll make it to Kenora. All right, we just crossed into Ontario. We left Saskatchewan, Manitoba border this morning. Came right across Manitoba. And here we are. Now, like I said last night, we're or this morning, we've got a long ways to go still, but it's kind of nice. We've crossed from the Pacific Ocean and we'll soon be in the Great Lakes region. We'll see you down the road. 